Hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Great Locks. I'm Gunther the Great and we're going to be dealing with Frizzy Dreadlocks. Today we got a question from Exo Josh. He said, hey Gunther, big fan. I was just wondering if you had any tips on maintaining the frizz of my hair. I'm about two weeks in using the crochet hook method on curly hair. Thanks. Keep up the great work. And by this picture, we can see that he most likely has a looser curl pattern. So with him saying curly hair, he means a looser curl pattern. So his hair type is most likely, I would say either a 2C or maybe a 3A. Now with us having that knowledge of his hair, with him doing crochet hook method, which is perfect for his hair type, and I think the biggest thing that needs to be done is something that I explained in one of my older videos of how to handle frizzy dreadlocks or loose dreadlocks. Because all frizz really is, is dealing with loose dreadlocks. Like me, for instance, obviously I don't have my dreadlocks like I used to, but as you can see, my hair is basically loose. Now what would happen is if I weren't to do anything to my hair right now, which low key, that's really what I'm trying to do and allow these to freely form, um, if I did that, it allows my hair to lock up. So with any kind of loose hair, when it comes to dreadlocks, it all has to do with immature dreadlocks. And there's really only two ways you can get mature dreadlocks. The first way would be time. And a lot of us don't have the patience to, you know, take the time to allow them to mature up. But when it really comes down to it, there is another way. And that is choosing a maintenance method. Maintenance is all you need to do in order to speed up the process and allow them to lock up quicker and make them look better. That's why you have maintenance like twisting with gel. And with him, I wouldn't recommend twisting with gel because it's not gonna pull in all that loose hair permanently as quick as possible. Then you have crochet hooking and crochet hooking is what I would recommend for his hair. But we'll get to that in a little bit. And you have interlocking, which I'll explain a little bit as well. And there's so many other forms of maintenance that you can do on dreadlocks in order to get them the way that you like them, not only the way you like them, but to minimize the frizziness. That's one of the number one things that you're gonna deal with with dreadlocks. And I don't think you'll ever permanently get rid of frizz because of new growth and everything like that. Frizz just kind of comes with the dreadlocks. And that's something that you have to embrace and kind of just accept. The best way to tackle frizzy hair or frizzy dreadlocks is to use a crochet hook. And I've done many tutorials on a crochet needle, but if you don't even have one, make sure to click the link at the top of the description. It's literally just crochet needle and it'll take you straight to Amazon to where you can get one for a great price. And I really like the crochet needle used in the description down below because it has a handle on it and it just makes it a whole lot easier. So yeah, that's literally it, a crochet needle that really helps the whole process of dealing with frizzy hair. Now, when it comes to not the tips being frizzy, but the roots, there is another way to tackle this and it is called interlocking. It is an easy way to tackle all that new growth. Now, it doesn't give as clean as a look as if you were twisting with gel, but it depends what your hair type is. If you have a straighter curl pattern, then you would most likely want to do interlocking because interlocking helps pull in all the roots, all the frizzy hair at the roots, all that loose hair, because all frizz is, like we said earlier, it's really just loose hair. I'm just gonna show you guys a quick clip of how to do all this. I made a video on it a long time ago. I'm just gonna touch base on it with you guys again. There are some updates on what I would prefer, but here's a video. Just pay close attention, it's very easy to do. But keep in mind that this does beat going to like a loctician or going to somebody to actually get your hair done. Also, a cool thing is the only things that I used today was like this brush, this comb, and also this crochet needle. And the crochet needle was, I mean, I kind of used it. I didn't use it that much. It was mostly just on the front of my hair, where my hairline is, because my hairline was begging. Now, the crochet needle I do use is a 12 over 1.00 millimeter. And I find this one to work the best just because it's the smallest one and you can pick this up at Walmart. I know you can pick it up like in arts and crafts stores, maybe Hobby Lobby. I think that's a place you could also pick it up. But it's basically all I use for knitting. So if you knit, you might have one laying around in the house, but I doubt any of you guys knit. So no, never mind. So yes, you can find this in the arts and crafts section, maybe by the knitting stuff, that's what it's used for, and it's used for crocheting as well. I think that's, I think it's the same thing.
All I wanted to do with the crochet needle is to take in all of the baby hairs on my hairline because my baby hairs on my hairline were no longer babies. These things were teenagers. They were super long. They were probably almost four inches, I would say, if not three and a half, which is almost four inches. But I wanted to take in all those baby hairs and pull them into the dreadlocks in the front of my hair because that's where I used to get my hairline. I actually used to brush that down and get like an artificial hairline. But I'm really cool with my own hairline. I know some people were like against my hairline. I don't know why. It's my hairline. I was born with it, so I just accept it, receive it. So yeah, I no longer want to have those baby hairs in the front, so I wanted to pull them all in with the crochet needle. So that is exactly what I did. Now this can be a very, very, very tedious process, especially if your dreadlocks are skinny like mine. And a lot of people are saying that my dreadlocks are thinning and no, that's not the case. I mean, essentially, I guess you could say that they're just maturing is what you would say. My dreadlocks are maturing, so they're getting tighter, which essentially will make them skinnier. I wouldn't say thinner. They're not, a, they're not thin because all the same hair is still there. I would just say skinnier. Now moving on to the next thing, this is something that I really, really, really didn't want to do, but I ended up doing it anyway because you gotta do what you gotta do to make everything look as good as you want it. So that's exactly what I did. So I started interlocking, and interlocking is something that I don't encourage anybody to do, but I, when I, I mean, obviously I did interlocking three years ago when I made that first video, and then now, I mean, I'm kind of paying the consequences of interlocking in the first place, because I, like I tell everybody, if you start interlocking, you are going to have to keep up the maintenance with interlocking. And I'm starting to learn that it's kind of hard to reverse that process, which I say you can, but it, it just takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of patience. And I, I didn't let my patience rule in this one. So I went ahead and did interlocking. And if any point in time I end up cutting my hair, I'm not gonna choose interlocking again if I choose to get dreadlocks after, if I ever cut my hair. I don't suggest this. So this is a step that you can skip if you've never interlocked your hair. So uh, yeah, don't don't interlock your hair. If you just so happen want to try it, and then if you plan on keeping up with interlocking, go ahead and do it. You'll just have to keep up with interlocking the whole time. Every time you do maintenance, do interlocking. You can't like interlock and then like start twisting your hair. I mean, you can. It'll just take a while for your hair to get into the process of like, oh snap, I'm starting to be twisted now instead of interlocked. And your hair literally has to learn how to do that. Everything has to get taught something and everything has to learn something. And hair is one of those things. Now while I was interlocking my dreadlocks, I was combing out the roots because obviously I wanted to comb out the root and make sure that the root is all the way out and like extended so that it's a perfect interlock instead of like interlocking all this like loose hair and kind of just like making sure that all of the hair that needed to be interlocked was being interlocked and that there was no more loose hair. So that's what, that's what combing out the roots does. It only benefits you. And you also want to comb out your roots when you're twisting your hair or doing any other form of maintenance because you want to stretch out your root as much as possible before you do maintenance because it allows your hair to elongate instead of like getting clumpy and being thick in one part and then skinny in one part, thick in one part. You gotta do it consistently. But yeah, like I said, there was probably three to four inches of new growth alone. About the same length as the baby hair is on the front of my head where my hairline is. And I don't know if it's just for my hair being heavy or me having dreadlocks, and I kind of do believe that your hair texture does change over time. Maybe. Just depends on if you have long hair or short hair. I feel if you have short hair, your hair texture never really changes, but if you have long hair, it kind of just changes over time. It'll elongate, and it'll become more straight rather than curly as it used to be. Because when I was combing out my roots, my hair was really straight. I'm like, I wonder if, if I took my dreads out, if my hair would be straight just because it's so long and it'll just be heavy, that it'll extend itself. But I'm not really sure on that. Maybe I could try it out one of these things, like comb out my dreads, I'm just playing, I, won't, I don't plan on coming out my dreads anytime soon. 
but maybe in the future you never know i did think it was really interesting that i had that much new growth and it felt like super smooth and it was really cool to actually feel my hair texture even though i don't remember that hair texture so after watching the video all you saw what i did was interlock the hair and use some crochet needling and that's literally all it takes it makes it so much easier on you guys so that you can know how to deal with this and that is what a crochet hook is for you want to use it to pull in loose hair and now another thing is you can also use an interlocking tool to do the interlocking because if you do have i mean if you just use it with fingers you can only go so far but with an interlocking tool you can get it all the way down to the root without it being too tight but at the same time not being too loose. So I think it's good if you get yourself an interlocking tool and a crochet hook. Both of those are gonna be linked down below. They both work really well. The cool thing about the interlocking tool that I'm linking down below is it's not one with a handle or anything like that. This one that I'm linking down below is actually very easy to use and a whole lot better to use because it doesn't get caught on anything because there's not any like moving parts. It's literally just single piece of metal with a hole in it and it works great. I've used it before on myself and I've used it before on other people and it's just really great product. Both of those are gonna be linked down below and they both will change the look of your dreadlocks and make them look so much more mature and look like they just got professionally done and it's you doing it yourself. If you need any other products like locking gel or, you know, like we mentioned today, a crochet needle or interlocking tool or any sort of, you know, shampoos or anything like that that's gonna go into your hair, make sure to go check out greatlocks.com. It literally has all of your hair needs Anything you need for your hair is on the website. Now, if there's things that you want, you can comment down below and I can definitely add those to the website. Or if there's things that you use that works out for you and is great for your hair, make sure to comment down below what product you use and what kind of hair type you have because that'll help everyone out who's reading the comments. But other than that, guys, thanks for tuning in to another Great Locks episode. And if you're wondering what's going on with the Beyond the Root series, don't worry, we're gonna get back to the interviews. Just comment down below who you guys wanna see next and I'm trying to reach out to other people and get them involved in this series. And I'm really excited to bring you guys new episodes. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.